Hello guys and welcome to a new Warner video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 3 vs 3 on rocks and I'm going to be using the second Panzer Grenadier division. This was a really really fun game and one that's on one of my favourite maps. I actually really like this map, it's not a favourite for a lot of people but Honestly, I like the terrain on this right hand side and although there's no sectors here, this area is sometimes really really interesting to fight over and that's what I'm going to be doing today. On the left hand side it is much more open and I think that's generally why people don't like the map as much. But here at the start we can see that uh, Colonel has brought in the seed aircraft and actually spotted a bunch of MI8s heading our way so I'm a little bit worried about uh, a bit of a heli rush start here. Those MI8s, you can't really mess with them. They do have a bunch of rockets. So my poor Falschmig Aufklader here, I've got to be super, super careful. BO-105, however, just holding back. And we're going to see that they're moving over to the left-hand side. Tornado coming in. It's going to try and engage those. I've also, as you can see, ordered a Tornado IDS MW1. Now that Tornado IDS MW1 has the awesome cluster ammo for infantry. So my plan was to try and bomb the infantry as they land and try and kill off the helicopters at the same time potentially. So here it comes. We'll hear the iconic sound and all that infantry getting deleted. Unfortunately, just a little too late to kill off the MI8 MTVs as well but it's at least enough to make him hesitate about moving forwards and gives Colonel time to get the javelin on target. So what I'm going to do in the meanwhile is get my Jaegers into position, get the scimitars up. I've got uh, Leopard 2A3 here, a couple of Leopard 1A1s and a Gepard 1A1. And I've also got a couple of Ihawks further back. The MIA MTVs, they are sneaking more to the right hand side. I'm able to get the Gepard on target, so that's a start. Meanwhile, a couple GR91s coming in for a rocket strike onto the Dessar Niki. Able to take them out nicely. Coming across, we're looking for the kill onto the Spetsnaz. And also the Motorradka. Lovely little rocket run there by the GR91s. MiG-29, not happy about that though. Able to get a lot of hits on target. GR91 gets a little bit of a spray towards the MiG-29, but not enough to shoot it down as the second MiG-29 finishes the job. So both my GR91s, they had a good run, but MiG-29s, of course, quite superior in that situation. Now we're going to be continuing our engagements on the ground. So Leopard 2A3 engaging T62 MB. Unfortunately gets hit very very hard and taken out. Not a good start for me as I lose two aircraft. My Leopard 2A3 and now my Leopard 1A1 as the MI8 MTV rockets get on target. Really, really bad news. Ihawks trying to move up here and get into range to take out the MI8s. I told you these are potent and they certainly did the job. There was also, I believe, a unit over here that was hurting me as well. Anyway, Scimitar's trying to move up and provide support to the Falschirmjäger, but Modestralki going to be able to pick that off with the RPG. I'm currently in a bit of an awkward position. I've got one Leopard 1A1 to defend myself and then just the Falschmeger in the buildings. But the Falschmeger in the building will be a little bit difficult for them to dislodge as long as I can keep the MI8 at arm's length. Meanwhile, you can see I've got BO-105s kind of hanging around. I've got a Bernspeer Scharfschützer on the right hand side that's trying to provide me with recon if anything wants to use those flanking roads. Leopard 1A1, just going to shift forwards, take the BMP3 kill. 
this Gapard moving across, just looking to line of sight from this direction so that I don't end up in line of sight of the T-62 whilst I try and shoot down the Mi-8. You can also see that I've loaded up the iHawk again. I did this because the iHawks were moving really slowly, so I was just hoping I'd be able to move that up quickly, but obviously didn't micro that fast enough. And you see that I have been focusing on buying a lot more reinforcements to help get things on the go. The Lynx AH7 joining me. You see the iHawks being moved up here so that we can get that into a better position to attack these helicopters. Because the iHawks, they don't have an insignificant amount of range versus helicopters. 3,175 is nothing to scoff at. Gepard does end up getting killed off by the MiG-25 BM. This thing has 40% ECM. Very difficult for us to shoot down. But the iHawks trying their best there at least. Meanwhile, Link H7 taking a shot at the T-62 MV. Forces the smoke. Link H7 now looking for the MTLB. Not quite finding that shot. And MiG-29 had something to say about that. What a beautiful aircraft. My Hawks at, the, at that moment were out of ammunition, so <laughs> manages to get away with it. But it does allow us to admire that aircraft just a little bit longer. So currently our team on a plus one, which has counted up quite significantly. Fox holding off the left hand side uh, with his fifth Panzer Division. SU-27, another very cool looking aircraft. Hanging about over our airspace. Again, no iHawk to fire at that just yet. Because they both out of ammunition. M13s have now arrived with that ammunition. And you can see that I am going to invest in a CH-53. In order to get some supply to the front line that I can ferry with those M13s in future. So I've just got to wait for my reinforcements to arrive. The Leopard 1A1s on their way. The Citadungs will provide a screen of infantry. SC-27 hanging around at the back there as the Jaguars came in for bombing strikes. Leopard 2A3s and 2A4s currently trying to engage T-80s and T-55s. Struggling a little bit at range. My infantry is nearly in position. The Leopards are nearly in position. I'm bringing up another iHawk. Because our opponents have invested so heavily into aircraft and also the helicopters, I thought it was a good idea to double down on the iHawks. And uh, therefore, we have a much better chance of shooting stuff down if there's three of them. Because these iHawks, they've got 55% accuracy, so they're pretty good. With a 40% ECM, that's significantly lowered. But it's still... Uh, more than good enough chance. With three of them, you're increasing that chance quite a lot. So Citadung's now engaging the enemy infantry here. It's going to give me the information that I need to engage the enemy BMP-1 PGs. I also took out the T-62. But the SU-24's now on the way. But my iHawks are set up and waiting. And there goes one SU-22, almost crashes into the iHawk. Hoping to shoot down the next one as well. I bring in the Tornado MW-1 to kill off the enemy infantry on the right-hand side. Did manage to do a decent job. Also able to take out more BMPs, so that's good. Now looking to take out the Pula Machiki, followed by the T-64BB. MiG-25 BM actually missing two of its missiles. Third one, however, or well, the, the second one coming in and firing off two missiles hit two of my iHawks. That was really, really bad for me, and both of those are going to get out alive. So whilst investing into the iHawks does pay off if they're going to use a lot of aircraft, I do need to be a lot more on point with my radar management. 
So in this situation, the best way for me to deal with those MiG-25 BMs is to have the IHawks actually turned off. And if they're turned off, then the radar is not active and the MiG-25 BMs cannot engage them with the seed missile. But what I want to do is have them turned off next time and then turn them back on when the MiG-25 BMs fly overhead. The only difficulty with that is, of course, turning them back on for other targets in good time. So you'll see that I... Oh, you won't be able to see it, but basically I'll put them into a control group so that I can quickly turn them back on if needs be. Oh, look at the turn on that missile. Seed uh, aircraft there, Tornado GR, trying to take out an enemy OSA. SU-25 engaged by the Tornado F3, but not quite able to get the job done. But the SU-25 does go down, almost kills my left when it crashes, or well, the Milan 2, sorry, when it crashes. MiG-29, managing to finish that off at least with my Ihawks. It did shoot down my recon helicopter as it banked around, which is really rude. But at least we we're able to get one back there, and the Ihawk that I've brought in to reinforce shoots down the SU-27 in the distance. These Ihawks have some incredible range. And one thing that I can also rely on is those MiG-25 BMs that came in with the Seed aircraft or with the Seed missiles. They are going to take quite a while to reload. So all this time that they're bringing in aircraft, the MiG-25 BMs are probably reloading. And it's a little bit of a mistake on their part because they probably don't want to try and use aircraft whilst uh, they are reloading because it's a bit of a waste. Because they're going to constantly get shot down. Chieftain Mark 9. Both of those get taken out. My Ihawk's actually not quite having a decent line of sight to shoot it beforehand. But do manage to finish it off as it flies away. So that's a good kill. Another good kill for these Ihawks. I'm going to bring up even more. So I've got another Ihawk on the way. This is the one that was back here. Going to be shifting that one forwards. So looks a one Fashimiega Avkala on the way. Another Ihawk on the right hand side. That's going to give us four Ihawks. That's a lot. So here's the MiG 25 BM. What you'll see me do is turn off the weapon system at the bottom here. As soon as it flies overhead, you'll see me turn it back on. There you go. It's back on. Take a little while to aim. And bam. All the missiles firing away. I'm really hoping that at least one hits the mark. <laughs> and it does. Now I've got to find the second shot. 40% ECM making them very, very hard to hit. But managing to kill it off there is a big, big win for me. Because he's only going to have a limited amount of those MiG-25 BMs available. So shooting one of them down. When there's probably only two. Is huge. Now Tornado's coming in there. Cluster Tornado, Jaguar, HE Bomber. SU-27 coming in to intercept. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite go over my air net, but does end up getting shot down by my teammate there. Probably the Javelin managing to clear that up. So nice kill for the Javelin indeed. But a lot of air kills so far as I continue to prepare my push across this terrain. It's really interesting terrain. I, I've mentioned it before at the start how interesting the terrain is here. Basically because it's like an island almost. It is an island. With these two sort of rivers going around it. It makes it very difficult to push onto and provides this sort of interesting strong point for our opponents that they can use these buildings to really affect uh, both this sector and this sector. And they can also have a command on this side of the river, whilst we have one on the other side. And so trying to work out ways to get across the river and so on is really, really cool. In this case, using airstrikes or even just uh, artillery would probably be the best way to deal with things. Seed aircraft coming in there. I actually managed to find a Tunguska kill. And then we shot down the MiG-27 LGB. SU-25 now coming in for the cluster strike. There's two of them on the way. Looking to try and shut down the push on the left here. Or potentially try and kill off the 2A3s or 2A4s uh, that I have. 
Actually, I only had two A3s. Uh, because we're playing second panzer ground, we don't get access to two A4s like Fox does here. But here comes the SU-25. Managed to hit it before it drops its cluster. Unfortunately, the second one does manage to get its cluster off. But not very many good targets here for the cluster. Only takes out an FB-432 and they lose the aircraft. So two SU-25s down for an FB-432. Seems like a pretty good trade. And you can see that my M13s are ferrying supply back and forth from the supply helicopter. Which is really, really useful. Now I'm going to be purchasing more reinforcements try and get that infantry into position to create another screen just like I was trying to do earlier with the sigilons the MiG-27 <laughs> gonna be going down next and yeah just watching these iHawks take these aircraft out of the sky is so so fun it's very very satisfying when you hit the mark with them that's for sure MiG-27 now coming in with the seed missile be careful of that. You can see that I have again turned off the iHawk so it can't be shot at. And I'll turn it back on as it banks away so that I can get a shot off. In this case we managed to bank it away at a safe distance but I didn't manage to get the shot on target mainly because of line of sight most likely. Okay, Marder 1A3 Milan's arriving. They are going to be able to provide decent fire support whilst the Panzer Grenadiers push forwards. Of course, I've still got the Jaegers on the way. I've got a couple more Gapards coming up. One thing to note about this map is that it does have very, very long <laughs> reinforcing roads. Like Because it's quite a deep map, it takes a long time for stuff to get to the front line. And forward planning a little because of that is quite important. You don't want to leave yourself with like too thin on the front line because you're not going to be able to reinforce yourself very quickly. Making sure you build up constructed pushes and then push forwards is like actually much more important on the, on a map like this than it may be in other maps. But another MiG-27 going to be taken out. Akula is actually coming up now, and all these airstrikes. I mean, they are slowly like stopping Colonel here from moving forwards. But Akula. Coming into range of the Ihawk. Not a place where it wants to be. Able to move just out of range though. And then get some damage onto these infantry. So now we're going to see Abbots. They're going to be able to engage the Conkers that was in that building. So the recon there getting forced out. So that's good. So my Panzergrens moving up to the edge of the tree line. Trying to act a little bit like recon. More aircraft floating around. Because I've fired so many IHawks, I was kind of forced to bring up more CH-53s to help shot shoot down a MiG-29. Another MiG-29 goes down as well. We actually get the kill for that one. <laughs> Third MiG-29 escapes. This is going to be the MiG-27. <laughs> we managed to hit it and force it back at least. Here comes the MiG-25BM. It is going to find the kill to one of my iHawks because I hadn't managed to turn them back off. But it's flying right over my Gepards. So it doesn't last long at all. And that's the second MiG-25 BM taken care of. So another really, really big kill. Going to shut down their airplane massively. And here comes some artillery. I have quite a lot of forces bunched up here. And you can see this is going to do a lot of damage. Huge strike coming in. My trucks are trying to escape as best they can. And this timing could not have been worse for me. 
Got the MiG taken care of. 27. <laughs> MiG 27 going down. Yeah, these Jaegers were just about to make a push, supported by all of these armored vehicles. Because this artillery is hitting us in these areas, it's just allowing them to ruin my infantry. But well, at least we get another air kill. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so many planes being shot down throughout this game. This one actually almost crashing into the building over there. Get them off your... Get them off your... The 2A3. Gonna do a runner. Trying to get that out of there. One of the ones that got forced out of position by the artillery strike. You see my Jaegers, they're trying to fall back a little bit there. Skyhawk actually coming to the rescue here against the Akula, forcing it back, not quite able to finish it off, but things delayed. So I've got a couple of, well, a few Milan 2s waiting to move up into position so that they can start firing their Milans whilst my tanks and APCs push forwards. I have also now purchased an absolute ton of Leopard 1A5, so armoured convoy on its way to help out. Since the artillery strikes over and I still have some infantry left, I'm going to be using them to screen the positioning of the Milan 2s. Try and take out some of these vehicles. So I've got three Ihawks left. We shot down two of the MiG-25 BMs. I think there was just the MiG-27K with the Seed missile left. But here you can see I'm now investing a couple of Tornado IDSs. And our engagement is well underway. 203 pushing forwards. One of my Marder 183s ends up getting hit by an HGM from this building. We're able to cut to finish off the BB. Take out the BMP3 as well. This Leopard 2A3 is kind of in trouble. But not being targeted by those HGMs just yet. Enables me to fall back for the time being. And we're going to try and get them fixed up. Jaegers, however have managed to make a little bit of ground there and you can see that on the left hand side Colonel's managed to get onto the Grenzers. Uh, it won't be long until we get into position here and I have now decided to bring up a Tornado IDS so that we can kill off the HGMs. SU-25's coming in for the strike onto my tanks. That's going to get taken out. They don't learn. Nice find onto that leader is going to give us full control on this right-hand side. And my Tornado IDS actually managed to get out alive, which was pretty big. Ihawk saving the day on the left-hand side. The Hunter has managed to move a T-80 BBK in here. That's a plus two for our opponents right now, even though we've secured the right-hand side. So I've moved these two CH-53s forwards, those were the ones that were further back. Just going to provide me like a mini fob so that I can repair my two A3s efficiently. Lots of helicopters coming in though, gotta be careful. There's just more and more air targets that I'm trying to take care of. So my Gepard here, moving up, going to be buying another Gepard. And it's just a matter of getting them into line of sight. And making sure that they stun them in time. Because there's a good chance that the HGMs hit the Gepard before the Gepard actually gets the stun. So got to be a bit careful. You can see the Gepards, they kind of lack a little bit of damage in my opinion. This one actually getting caught out by the HGMs that are still in that area. 
unfortunate because my Leopard 185s have just arrived and I would like to be able to push with them quite aggressively but I can't do that as long as these MI24s are in the way and the Akula there. Track Rapier however has come over from the left hand side that's certainly going to help out a lot as it does manage to hit the MI24 VP and take that out forcing Austin back. Hawks going to be picking those up and trying to unload them further up. It's a really risky play because if they're in HGM range, the iHawks will just get a one shot. But I managed to get the Gephardt to shoot down one of the Akulas, which is actually a really big kill because these Akulas aren't cheap. They're 280 points a pop. And I managed to shoot down one. We've managed to hit another with the rockets here. Missiles, I should say. And we managed to take out the second as well. So that's both of the Akula ATs taken out. Which means no more Vikir missiles. And the Vikir missiles are super strong. Two A three is just gonna to make itself off. Retreat from that for the time being. In the center. Things still not looking great. Sparks continuing to skirmish on the left hand side. Enemy at three o'clock. So I've moved the Ihawks back into a safer position. They can help continue to cover against enemy aircraft because the main threat of enemy helicopters is dealt with and the Gepard 1A1 here can do the rest. Well, <laughs> assuming it doesn't get killed off by the a to gm of course. And the Gepards, it's very easy to forget that they do have smoke. I could certainly do that. The two tornadoes that I have are more than capable of shooting down helicopters, so I'm going to be using them for that role rather than their cluster bombs. Open 2A3 providing nice fire support. A bunch of Munchstroke now coming forwards though, so going to attempt to push forwards with the Leopard 1A5. So I've got a bunch of Jaegers and Falchim Jaegers. Ready to push forwards as well. Yeah, Pard. Keeping the Motostrauki stun there is actually pretty important. We don't want the RPG to be killing my Gap Pard. Almost does. We managed to take him out in time. Fashmig is going to be jumping in that building and able to engage the Motostrauki. Meanwhile, GR-91s coming in with HE bombs hoping to take out the Conkers and the grenade launchers in there not quite managing to get the job done as you can see but here comes my push the Leopard 185s moving out in abundance across the open here are going to be able to hit this T-64 BB pretty hard and we clean that up as well as all of the Modestrauki. And finally, we've broken the camel's back. There is the two T-64s on the right hand side. We've got to be a bit careful of the Leopard 2A3 under threat. But we're sitting on the plus two with the center recaptured. The Hunter moving in an MI9 to try and capture that back. A bunch of BRMs <laughs> pushing our way. Backed up by the T-64s. Basically what I've got to do is try and get into a good position to just kill all these BRMs. Blind the T-64s. And then get the kills. But nice cluster strike coming in there from Colonel. Going to take them down to very, very low health. I've got two of my tornadoes coming in as well. And they're going to be attempting to finish these off. I don't need to waste one of the strikes on the BRMs. So we're going to allow that one to hit the mark. And this one's now going for the T-64 BBK. And a little bit deep for the MIA MTA there. And it does cost me that tornado. But a good kill onto the T-64 nonetheless. And now these Leopard 185s rushing through. Tornado coming in with the HE bombs. Gonna get the job done there. 
and the 105s continuing their push. Now plus two back in the favour of our opponents as they do manage to capture Echo. So Hunter keeping our opponents in the game. But we're certainly in the driving seat on the right hand side. As things have completely broken wide open. Plenty of reinforcements coming up. There is a couple of T-80Bs here. They're a bit sketchy for me to deal with. I do manage to find kills onto my Leopard 185s. Trying to get my Fauschimega with its Panzerfaust 3 into range of the T-80B. AT weapons on infantry provide a lot of cohesion loss to enemy tanks. So it's something that I was hoping I could do against these T-80Bs. But these Leopard 185s, they've managed to find the enemy command. So that was really good. Uh, so that's going to give us full control over this sector, the large sector there. Now we've just got to try and take back this sector. But how am I going to do that? I'm bringing in an absolute ton of Leopard 1A1s. It's another tank convoy on its way to help us out. Just some epic German tank convoys coming to back me up throughout this game. Been very, very helpful indeed. And all the while, just going to be continuing to move up more stuff on the right hand side iHawks trying to shoot down another aircraft Ronan 2 manages to finish the job Alpha Jets now coming in not as cool as GR91s looking for the strafing run into the MI24s Ideally, in that situation, you want to have both of the Alpha Jets try and shoot the same helicopter because they do kind of lack the damage to get the job done otherwise, as you just saw. The T-80B. We're going to take one out. I managed to smoke off and get my 2A3 out of there, so that was really nice. Scimitars, meanwhile, engaging the Monstrapi. Supply has arrived, which is going to allow me to fix up my tanks. Actually, really close to the front line. Very, very helpful indeed. But, uh, meanwhile, some nice smoke here has allowed the rover to get in onto the backside. And my 24V is so close to being able to take that out, but the uh, Abbott's covering it with smoke as much as possible. Leopard 1A1s very much on the way. Nearly in position. T62M, meanwhile, pushing through and trying to clean out these. So I did manage to kill, obviously, the enemy command on the backside of this sector, but they have now replaced it. Ihawks firing away. I just hit the MiG-31, who <laughs> flies over the track. Arabias gets shot down. Now I'm going to be bringing in my MiGs. Not my MiGs, my Tornadoes, sorry. Tornado IDS actually going for the strike onto enemy... Onto enemy AA, and you can see the GR 91s. I focused down one helicopter at a time, so I took managed to take out both of the MI 24Vs. Really, really good. So I'm going to focus down the MI 8 MTA there, and hopefully try and bomb out the Strela 10M. <laughs> My HE bombs actually do absolutely nothing. So not ideal, but we have dealt with a lot of these helicopters, which is really nice. And now it's time for my Leopard 1A1s to get into position, spread out, and push forwards in the center. Meanwhile, just sneaking through here to pick off this T-62. He's going to manage to reverse it in time, paying attention. This GR-91 still floating about, just waiting to be shot down. There we go, getting it, getting them spread out. And that's enough, so off we go. I think Leopard 1A1s look pretty cool. 
The Leopard 101s, uh, Leopard 105s, the Leopard 1s in general, I think are really, really good looking tanks. We'll follow them as they push forwards. There's a T 80 BVK, is my target there. Gem. Gonna cause my leopard problems. Gonna pop some smoke and get it out of there. There we go, target spotted. Fire away, boys. <laughs> Moving forwards, artillery coming into the TA to BBK, certainly helping out quite a bit. The Leopard 1A1 just scoring a straight side shot there to get the job done. Strata 10M also going to go down. Leopard 2A3, meanwhile, engaging the TA to BB on the backside. Yigla taken out. Mortistrauki Metis going to be the next target. They are wiped out nice and quickly. Plus four now on the board as we do capture this sector. Tornado coming in with HE bombs there, certainly going to help us kill the T 80 BB. Seed aircraft coming in, taking out enemy AA. Just everything was going perfectly with these strikes. T 80 BB on the left hand side managed to get an ace gem in the back. But the Leopard 1A1s finding the kill on the move onto these T 80 BBs. And at this point, I was like, you know what? I'm going to smoke off and then we're going to pull back because I want to stop the tanks from the front side engaging me while I deal with this TATBV on the flank. You can see I'm pulling off. I'm going to try and deal with that TATBV. Unfortunately, <laughs> I need to get pretty close in order to be able to penetrate it. And, uh, I also need to <laughs> hit the thing. At the moment, I'm just continuing to drive away because the the T-80s were right behind me. Here we'll take out the Motor Vertica though, and we're putting a lot of pressure onto this T-80 BB. Unfortunately, it doesn't really lower its rate of fire because it does have a auto loader. The stun stops it from shooting. We've managed to find the kill. Plus six on the board as the Sultan actually sneaks in here with smoke. And not long now until the end of the game. And yeah, another really, really fun game. Loads of air kills by the Ihawks, <laughs> absolutely tons. Followed up by really, really fun pushes with the Leopard ones. Tornado IDS gonna be coming in there for a cheeky cluster strike. The ATB taken out nicely. The Tornado IDS even survived that, so that was great. And the game's going to end with another victory. Wonderful stuff. 11,440 kills. 5,735 losses. The reason the kills are so high is because our opponents just kept buying aircraft. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, flying them over my IHOX. <laughs> So we got a ton of kills. The Tornado IDS did pretty well for me here. You can see it. That was the strike at the start onto the Desan Niki that got dropped out of the helicopters. It's a shame that I didn't manage to get the helicopters as well because that would have been a really nice strike. Second strike managed to kill a bunch of Motostrauki before it got shot down. Leopard 2A3s did really well, but check out these IHawks. <laughs> that is an entire page almost except from the Leopard of IHawk kills. <laughs> SU-22s, SU-25s, MiG-29s, enemy helicopters even, including the Akula. Uh, the Gepards, of course, getting kills in the air as well. Just so many air kills in this game. Really, really fun stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.